Hello friends welcome to English language and literature today i'm going to discuss a very famous poem by samuel taylor coleridge kubla khan so before moving on to the poem let's discuss a little bit about the writer samuel taylor coleridge he was born in the year 1772 okay 1772 he was a poet critic uh, a philosopher okay he belonged to the romantic period he was uh, considered to be the founder of romantic movement in england along with william wordsworth okay and he is a member of the lake poets so other poets of the lake school were william wordsworth robert southey these lake poets they were a group of uh, english poets who all lived in the lake district of england okay so uh, samuel taylor coleridge was uh, one among those lake poets and uh, he was a founder of the romantic movement in england okay his first work poems on various subjects it appeared in 1796 and with the publication of the lyrical ballads in the year 1798 Samuel Taylor Coleridge and William Wordsworth they ushered in the great literary revolution in English poetry and it is known as the romantic revival okay so this is with the publication of the lyrical ballads by Coleridge and Wordsworth in the year 1798 okay so a little bit about the lyrical ballads uh, here in this uh, work the there were poems by wordsworth and also by coleridge wordsworth offered to treat subjects chosen from ordinary life okay whereas coleridge deals with the supernatural okay so uh, in this collection there were poems by both uh, coleridge and wordsworth okay so uh, the rime of the ancient mariner these are all his major works then christabel kubla khan dejection and ode all these are his major uh, poems then there is a most important prose work biographia literaria which was published in 1817 it's considered to be a literary autobiography okay so coleridge was a very imaginative writer uh, he was an idealist and he wanted to reform the human race okay so uh, he um, was fragile okay both physically and also mentally and this condition his condition was worsened by his addition to uh, addiction to opium okay he used opium and this uh, in turn worsened his both his physical and mental condition okay so this particular poem kubla khan was uh, completed in 1797 and uh, was published in 1816 it has also some uh, have some other titles like a vision in a dream a fragment okay so here in this poem the readers and they are uh, transported to the half legendary and half historical palace of kubla khan in zanadu So uh, this Kubla Khan he was the grandson of Chenghis Khan he was the uh, great founder of the Mongol dynasty in China okay so there is a reference to the uh, stately palace built by this Kubla Khan in Parchas's pilgrimage written by Samuel Parchas in 1625 okay so samuel parchas's work in samuel parchas's work parchas's pilgrimage which was in uh, 1625 there there was a reference to the stately palace built by kubla khan okay so uh, coleridge uh, was reading this parchas's pilgrimage in his lonely in a lonely farm house so he was reading this uh, parchas's pilgrimage and uh, but he fell asleep under the influence of some drug okay he has used some drugs and uh, with because of the influence of that drug he fell asleep while reading this work parchas's pilgrimage so uh, he uh, college was 
uh, he experienced an um, opium influenced dream after reading this work so uh, he was in his lonely farm house and while he was sleeping the various scenes from the book parchas's pilgrimage they fused themselves and uh, he had a dream in that opium induced sleep okay so uh, he could vividly recollect the dream even after he woke up okay so uh, he was under the influence of opium and at that time he was reading parchas's pilgrimage uh, in his uh, lonely in his uh, farm house he was alone and he was reading parchas's pilgrimage and he fell asleep because of the influence of or because of the use of opium so while sleeping he had a dream okay he had different different pictures of what he had read in parchas's pilgrimage and uh, he could vividly recollect all those um, things which he had visioned in his dream even after he woke up and he could effortlessly wrote down the 54 lines of kubla khan okay he could easily write these 54 lines of what which is now kubla khan the poem but he couldn't complete it okay because he was interrupted by a visitor while he was writing these lines of poetry he was interrupted by a person from pollock okay he was interrupted by that person and he couldn't continue that uh, continue writing the poem okay if uh, this person has not interrupted uh, coleridge he could have uh, he this poem would be of uh, some 200 300 uh, lines but this person from pollock he interrupted coleridge and so he couldn't complete the poem because of that this kubla khan the poem was limited to this 54 lines okay and he didn't uh, publish this poem he left it unpublished because it is not complete okay and it was unpublished until 1816 and he published it at the request of lord byron okay so it was kept uh, for pr- private readings and uh, uh, because of lord byron's uh, request coleridge published this poem in the year 1816 okay so moving on to the poem kubla khan in zanadu did kubla khan a stately pleasure doom decree where alf the sacred river ran through caverns meshless to man down to a sunless sea in zanadu zanadu it is the summer residence of kubla khan okay in zanadu did kubla khan a stately magnificent a stately pleasure pleasure doom decree decree means order okay order so kubla khan ordered his men to build a stately a magnificent pleasure doom in zanadu where alf the sacred river so it is an imaginary river where alf the sacred river ran through caverns caverns means caves meshless to man down to a sunless sea so uh, kubla khan ordered his servants to uh, build a pleasure doom to construct a pleasure doom on the banks of the holy river the sacred river alf an imaginary river and this alf ran through a series of caves where alf the sacred river ran through caverns it ran through a series of caves and um meshless to man down to a sunless sea so this holy river alf it ran through a series of caves and it it is and no one could measure them okay and it then flows down to an underground ocean okay sunless sea to an underground ocean that means the sun never shines there an underground ocean so kubla khan ordered his servants to build a pleasure doom decree means to order where alf an imaginary river it ran through caves which was measureless to man and it flows to a sunless sea to an underground ocean okay then so twice 5 miles of fertile ground 
with walls and towers were girdled round and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills where blossomed many an incense bearing tree and here were forests ancient as the hill ancient as the hills enfolding sunny spots of greenery so twice 5 miles means 10 miles twice 5 means 10 miles so twice 5 miles of fertile ground okay 10 miles area of landscape with walls and towers was girdled round so uh, the servants they created a space with 10 miles of fertile earth and it was surrounded by walls and towers with walls and towers were girdled round surrounded by okay and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills sinuous rills means winding streams okay and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills so in it there were gardens okay with uh, sunny like streams then where blossomed many an incense bearing tree means fragrant trees okay and here were forests ancient as the hills as old as the hills okay that means there were forests very old forests enfolding sunny spots of greenery so uh, there were uh, what fragrant trees as well as very old uh, forests with sunny clearings in the middle okay so this is the description of kubla khan's garden okay 10 mile area of landscape and it was surrounded by walls and towers uh, winding streams then the trees were aromatic the trees bearing fragrant flowers okay so green vegetation forest containing uh, grassy patches of land okay then but oh that deep romantic chasm which slanted down the green hill athwart a sedan sedan cover a savage place as holy and enchanted as ever beneath a waning moon was haunted by woman wailing for her demon lover but oh that deep romantic chasm that means wonderful of inspiring abyss romantic chasm okay chasm means a deep fissure in the surface of a planet a deep fissure okay so but oh that deep romantic chasm which slanted down the green hill athwart a sedan cover so he's saying it was beautiful but oh the deep romantic chasm which slanted down the green hill athwart a sedan cover so it was very beautiful how beautiful was that deep uh, impressive gorge that uh, chasm okay and uh, it cut through the green hill between the sedar trees okay athwart a sedan cover that means across the hillside covered with a uh, sweet smelling of sedar trees a savage place here this term savage it refers to the terrifying beauty of the place okay terrifying beauty of that a uh, place a savage place as holy and enchanted enchanted means that spot as though haunted by uh, supernatural beings it seemed to be under a magical charm so it was like haunted as holy and enchanted as ever beneath the waning moon was haunted by woman wailing for her demon lover so uh, here college is talking about a medieval belief that earthly women they were loved by demon lovers so this place it appeared to be uh, the haunt, uh, haunting place of a woman charmed by her demon lover so here it is the picture of the woman abandoned by her demon lover and she is uh, crying out for him in that dark night okay uh, it all builds up an eerie atmosphere so here the writer is saying it is so beautiful how beautiful was the deep impressive gorge that chasm 
and it cut through the green hill between the cedar trees so it was such a wild place it was so sacred that you might expect it to be haunted by some supernatural elements here it is a woman crying out for her demon lover okay beneath that crescent moon and from this chasm with ceaseless turmoil seething as if this earth in fast thick pans were breathing a mighty fountain momently was forced amid whose swift half intermittent burst huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail or chaffy grain beneath the thresher's flail so earlier he was describing about the landscape where the pleasure palace was uh, built and now uh, there is a description of a mighty fountain okay which sprang up from the chasm the fountain it itself was more uh, mysterious it did not rise in a continuous flow but intermittently okay and from this chasm with ceaseless turmoil that means unending bubbling noise seething as if this earth in fast thick pans were breathing okay so uh, there is an unending bubbling noise from beneath the earth as if it were uh, the rapid uh, pulsation of the earth's heart okay as if this earth in fast thick pans were breathing it is as though it was it were the uh, rapid pulsation of earth's heart okay a mighty fountain momently was forced burst out okay a mighty fountain moment moment sorry momently was forced amid whose swift half intermittent burst half intermittent burst means irregular intervals at which the fountain uh, sprouted okay so this fountain is interpreted as a um, what a symbolic representation of a poetic activity okay a mighty fountain momently was forced was burst out amidst whose swift half intermittent burst huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail or chaffy grain beneath the thresher's flail so this fragments huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail so here uh, each uh, spurt of form it threw up uh, huge pieces of stones that leaped up like hailstones that means uh, pieces of snow striking the earth and then flying off or like uh, grains and chaff leaping up from the earth when beaten with a flail what is this flail it is uh, that stick used for threshing corn okay so uh, this there uh, here it is the description of a mighty mountain which sprang up from the chasm and the fountain itself it was described as uh, more mysterious it did not rise in a continuous flow but intermittently half intermittent burst and midst these dancing rocks at once and ever it flung up momently the sa- sacred river five miles meandering with a mazy mo- motion through wood and dale the sacred river ran then reached the caverns measureless to man and sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean and mid this tumult kubla heard from far ancestral voices prophesying war and midst these dancing rebounding rocks at once and ever it flung up momently the sacred river that means the river alf 5 miles meandering meandering means flowing in a zigzag manner with a mazy motion through wood and dale the sacred river ran so this holy river alf it ran for 5 miles in a lazy winding course through woods and fields uh, before it reached the that deep caves okay through wood and dale the sacred river ran then reached the caverns measureless to man so the sacred river it reached those deep caves which were measureless to man 
uh, before uh, reaching this place uh, this river it ran for 5 miles in a lazy winding course through woods and fields okay and sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean so it sank into the much stiller into a lifeless ocean okay and mid this tumult kubla heard from far ancestral voices prophesying war so uh, in that uh, tumult sound of the river joining the sea that sunless sea okay that means lifeless ocean without living creatures so in that tumult sound of the river joining that sea uh, kubla khan he heard the voices of his ancestors ancestral voices prophesying war he heard the voices of his ancestors prophesying wars that means uh, kubla khan's ancestors they were all uh, great conquerors okay and they rebuke him for his indolent life okay so and mid this tumult kubla heard from far ancestral voices prophesying war so here it is the description of that sacred river alf it moves through caverns before moving uh, before reaching that caverns it uh, moves through wood and uh, dales and fields okay then reach the caverns which is measureless to man so uh, in that uh, tumultuous sound of that river joining the sea kubla khan heard the voices of his ancestors prophesying war the shadow of the doom of pleasure floated midway on the waves where was the herd the mingled measure from the fountain and the caves it was a miracle of rare device a sun- sunny pleasure doom with caves of ice so the shadow of the doom of pleasure that means the shadow of kubla khan's pleasure doom the shadow of the doom of pleasure floated mid wave midway on the waves so this uh, shadow of that pleasure doom it was reflected by the waves okay where was heard the mingled measure so uh, one could hear the sound of that geyser mingling with that of the water rushing through the caves so this shadow of the doom of pleasure floated midway on the waves where was heard the mingled measure from the fountain and the caves so that um, sound of that fountain mingling with the water rushing through the caves it was a miracle of rare device a sunny pleasure doom with caves of ice so it was a miracle of rare device that means it is a it was a rare architectural marvel it was a miracle a sunny pleasure doom with caves of ice that means this pleasure doom it was a miraculous combination of sunny doom and also icy caves here sunny pleasure doom with caves of ice okay so this was a miraculous combination of sunny pleasure doom and also icy caves that means its towers were always bright with sunlight its lofty towers that sunny doom that means it were always bright with sunlight while the lower parts lower apartments were caves of ice a sunny pleasure doom with caves of ice it was a miracle of rare device a rare architectural marvel okay a damsel with a dulcimer in a vision once i saw it was an abyssinian maid and on her dulcimer she played singing of mount dabora so here coleridge uh, introduces another dream okay of a damsel with a dulcimer he introduces another dream in which he saw an abyssinian maid and she was singing of mount dabora okay so uh, in a vision in an, a damsel with a dulcimer he in a vision in another dream he saw an abyssinian maid okay she was uh, a damsel with a dulcimer in a vision once i saw it was an abyssinian maid and on her dulcimer she played singing of mount dabora so he in another dream he saw a woman a, da- a damsel playing a stringed instrument 
and uh, she was singing about mount dabora okay a mountain in ethiopia this uh, she he saw an ethiopian woman a damsel with a musical a string instrument and uh, she was uh, singing of mount dabora dulcimer means a stringed musical instrument okay could i revive within me her symphony and song to such a deep delight it would win me that with music loud and long i would build that doom in air so here the poet feels that if only he could revive that rapturous delight of the damsels uh, that music could i revive within me her symphony and song to such a deep delight it would win me that with mu- music loud and long i would build that doom in air so he is saying if i could recreate within myself the sound of her instrument could i revive within me her symphony and song okay it would bring me so much joy to such a deep delight it would win me that with music loud and long i would build that doom in air so i would build kubla khan's pleasure palace in the sky above me in the air okay that sunny doom those caves of ice and all who heard should see them there and all should cry beware beware his flashing eyes his floating hair so if i could recreate within myself the sound of that lady's instrument and her song it would bring me so much joy that i would build that kubla khan's pleasure palace in the sky above me that sun filled doom that sunny doom th- those caves of ice those caves full of ice and everyone who heard the song would look up and see what i had built and all should cry beware 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 and they would cry out be careful okay look at his wild eyes his flashing eyes his floating hair and his crazy hair okay so if i had the talent of that uh, abyssinian maid i would also create um, what that mystery in the sky kubla khan's pleasure doom in the sky above me so that everyone could watch it we were circled round him thrice and close your eyes with holy dread for he on honey dew hath fed and drunk the milk of paradise so we were circled round him thrice so make a circle around him three times and close your eyes with holy dread for he on honey dew hath fed and drunk the milk of paradise so make a circle around him three times and refuse to look at him he has eaten the food of the gods and drunk the milk of heaven so here in this these concluding lines it, it present the picture of a, a divinely inspired poet his eyes would flash and his hair would waft up in the wind okay so the scared onlookers those who watched that it warn, uh, would warn each other against going near him they would draw a magical circle thrice round him in order to ward off his magical influence we were circled round him thrice and close your eyes with holy dread that means that of for he on honey dew hath fed and drunk the milk of paradise that means the poet had taken divine food okay so hence divinely inspired so here he implies that a uh, divinely inspired poet they ra- radiates the magical power of poetry so um, this uh, that magical power of poetry will be there in divinely inspired poets okay thus uh, the poet concludes the poem okay hope you understand the poem thank you so much this is a quick summary of samuel taylor coleridge's kubla khan